Yo, how's it going? Yo, hey man, how's it going? How's your um how's your new gig going? Nice ship, cheers, thanks. Wait, one more week and you start a new... Oh, okay, you're going to start the other gig. Alright, so... That's pretty cool, man. Yeah, Miguel, is this your uh, your first time tuning into one of these streams? Your yeah, favorite one who uh, who doesn't know, this is obviously a uh, sponsored by Autodesk stream. Is this your first one? Ah, right, so yeah, it's going pretty well so far, man. We um, I did this concept mesh like a few years ago. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to rebuild the entire concept mesh as a production mesh within 10 streams, like 2 to 3 hours per stream. Yo, Channel Boy, how's it going, man? And, um, like, fortunately, I already have a kit bash, which is pretty similar to the parts. That's all sub d and UV'd. But, um, within... We've done 3 streams so far, 9 hours. We've already got this, which is pretty cool. This is... This is going much faster than I thought it would, to be honest. So maybe we can uh, do UVs as well. Yeah, like all the paneling and stuff, we could kind of extract from the concept mesh and like retopo it, clean it up, you know, extrude it to get our paneling. Uh, a lot of this stuff we could kind of replace and kit bash like elements of the kit. So yeah, it's going uh, it's going pretty good for for technically one full day of work. <laughs> oh, yeah, all the uh, all the streams are being uploaded onto YouTube as well. So if you want to check that out, you can always go check out the uh, the YouTube's on my YouTube. I mean, yeah, we'll just let everyone uh, tune in. How's everyone's uh, week going so far? Am I still a DNAC? Yeah, I'm still a DNAC. We are still doing things. I'm uh, I'm definitely ready for a holiday though. Yo, Lucas, how's it going, man? Yo, if you guys don't know uh, Lucas, you should definitely check him out as well. Channel already did the shout out, sick dude. Yeah, Lucas is a uh, sick creature guy at Dino, and he started streaming as well, so uh, go give him a follow. So you're not a full time streamer? Ah, <laughs> no chance. Nah, streaming isn't really a. Um, you can't make a living off streaming. <laughs> Blunt. <laughs> Lucas is apparently one level higher than us. What do you mean?
You need to play stupid games to live from it? Maybe. <laughs> um, when you get to this production stage, are you constantly thinking of real world and if your designs would make sense if, in real life? Uh, to an extent. I mean, of course, you're constantly thinking if things would really be like this. Like, say, for example, like, I already have a rubber seal there. But, say, for example, like, glass doesn't just go into metal. So, if the seal wasn't there, I would think about stuff like that. Like, oh, if we have the rubber seal, it will help the, uh... It will help the realism of the uh, the vehicle, stuff like that. So we do we do think about that sort of stuff, and that is based on the real world. Yo, thanks, man. But yeah, we uh, we definitely think about that sort of stuff. We we do try and apply a level of logic based on the real world. So we d do look at stuff like that, and then we I usually look at reference for like very specific things. Like I need to know, like say for example, we do some like damage pass. We always look at reference from that. Like, if we want to rip this in half, we would look at reference of, like, you know, crashed airplanes and stuff like that. We're going to make a full cockpit interior? Probably not. It wasn't... It wasn't in the in the concept. So, um, I'll probably block out something we'll use, like, for basic... That's the thing, because we have such limited time to make this thing. Originally, picture designer responsible for it. Are you asking if I did it? Yeah, I, I did the design originally. This is my design. And I did a very basic paint over on it before. Um, that's, no, that's, that's the thing. So yeah, this is, this is my design from a few years ago I did. Fortunately, we can just kind of take this and use the kitbash elements to, uh, to make it. But yeah, we, uh, we don't actually need the concept anymore. So we've replaced enough of the concept mesh that we don't need it, and we also don't need the uh, the concept itself. Would you have to flesh out the cockpit in actual production? If so, I presume we're making stuff up. Yeah. So if like if we can't actually see the con if we can't actually see the cockpit, we would just make it up. And the easiest way to do that would be like say for example, on this show we had a bunch of aircraft or vehicles very similar to each other. I would probably just steal cockpit interior parts and just kit bash one in here but since we don't have a cockpit i'm just going to block out something super basic and the idea of that is like we're not going to see like a shot inside the cockpit or anything it's more just for like say for example you see it from this angle you can see there's something in there so you just block out very basic shapes but yeah we keep it pretty basic usually usually interiors are pretty simple Unless, like, we, we actually need to make a, a good interior. But, um... Yeah, we should be able to do, uh... We should be able to get UVs in. Since we're already, uh... We're already pretty far. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. a lot of repeated muscle memory and experience yeah probably yeah assuming the level of detail you do depends on the shot and usage uh every literally every single thing we do is dependent on shot and usage like there's no like we wouldn't build any of this crazy mech if we only see it from here so like the very very first thing you do as soon as you get an asset is you you ask how it's used. That's that's the very before you even start modeling. That's the very first thing you do is you find out the context of how this thing is being used. There's no point of uh, building things you, you won't see, and usually the stuff won't even be bid to a level that you have the time to do that sort of stuff anyway. Well, it's a bit slow. Yeah, at the level we're at now, it's already at a pretty decent level where you could probably, like, you know, show VFX suit like a first pass and stuff like that. Just do some renders. 
pretty simple stuff. <laughs> it's never bid to a level that you have the time to do it. That's very true. Yeah, that's why like knowing what is good enough is really important in VFX. And knowing where to like fight your battles. Because you never get the time to do like everything perfectly. No way. Which is why I thought it would be a good idea to rep to show like how because we only have like ten streams to do this. And if we're gonna add UVs as well. It'll be a pretty good example of um, like cutting corners to like a good, in an efficient way, I mean. Like, uh, for example, we have no idea what's in the back here. So we could probably just block all of this off with a kit bash bar and save a lot of time. You can just stuck, you can, you can just stick a cube in there if you want. But um, this just is free detail. Maybe not. Because oh. no one's really going to look in here anyway. Uh, Oops. Actually, I don't like that it sticks out so far. I mean, we'd obviously have to fix stuff with this. Yo, how's it going? Um, are you remote working? Yeah, a lot of people are. Um. Has any studio reopened that I'm aware of? Um, I don't personally know anyone. This isn't good, but we can worry about that later. Excuse me. Like, I'm not going to worry too much about it. They can just sit there for now. Ah, uh, that's too... Do you ever just use textures then if it's a distant shot photo bashing on basic primitives? Um, I don't know what you mean by photo bashing. But um I'm in production, not concept. I think that's what you're thinking of, right? Something like that's probably better. We don't actually see this from the concept angle, so we kind of have free reign just to do whatever we want here. I might just put another thing in here. Like a lot of the time, these greebles don't actually matter what they are. So you can get away with like just reusing the same pieces quite often. Scaling them up, putting them in different places. At the moment I'm just trying to like block the light. Or block the gap I mean. This using texture for detail? Oh, okay. Um, it depends. Modeling always looks better. Like if you can model it in, it usually looks better than the textures. It's it's a balance of um Yeah, it's definitely a balance of um what's it called? Yeah, that's like you talk to your texture artist quite often about this sort of stuff. Like how far should we go in the model? What do you guys want to do in texture, stuff like that? But yeah, no, I don't know any studios opened up yet.
If you were me, you would sit on a beach for work. Uh, that might be quite hard to work in that environment. For riggers, do they care about those greebles? Um, uh, I don't know why they wouldn't, why they would care. What's, um, sorry, what's your reasoning behind riggers caring about the greebles? That's kind of cool, actually. We do do, like, a cleanup pass where we, like, remove a lot of the stuff we can't see like i would just like delete the back of that stuff like that are your kit parts just collected over time or did you set aside time to just build the kit bash stuff so originally i did just kit bash originally i did just kit bash stuff no wait what am i saying so what i did was like i built the kit for a specific asset and over time like as i build things i just pull them aside and add them to my kit so it's built up over time do they have to rig every single part i mean everything is rigged i mean at least i think so i don't i don't know why everything wouldn't be rigged yeah what is this I didn't realize this was broken like that. I mean, yeah, I don't know why rigging would have a problem with gribbles. It's just more geometry. Uh, everything stays within the studio you're at. You can't, you, can, you definitely can't take stuff from another studio to another. That's that's a very obvious no. Maybe I can just cap that off pretty easily. You can take your cup. <laughs> oh god. Steal the mug from the kitchen. Free swag? Nah, you, nah, crew gear isn't free. We still have to pay for crew gear. <laughs> uh, so dumb. I'm just trying to make this area a bit, a bit nicer than just the jaggedy edges. Nothing is free, that's true. Actually, I don't know. To be fair, at, at, at Dino, the kitchen is pretty good. We get, like, free cereal and free toast and stuff like that. That's all pretty cool. Some studios have free soft drinks. I think that's bad. I don't want free soft drinks. Are you allowed to wear ILM shirts at d -neck? Or will they tell you to take it off? No, of course not. <laughs> I mean, of course they're not going to tell you to take it It's just a shirt. Everyone bounces around the industry anyway. So, like, everyone you're working with has worked at all these other companies as well. <laughs> they're not going to They're not gonna tell you to take off the, uh, the d neg shirt at ILM or vice versa. Video game studios have their own chef. I mean, I heard I heard EA is pretty good. Yo, how's it going? God, can you imagine? There's just like security at the front of like Dino or someone. They see you coming in with like a, I don't know, like an NPC jumper, and they just tell you to take it off and refuse your entrance. 
<laughs> that would be pretty funny. Nah, you see, you see people walking out of uh, crew swag all the time. It uh, it doesn't it doesn't mean anything. Uh, let's see. At the moment, I just want to focus on like just filling gaps for now. But there's obviously a massive hole in here. Let's put something basic in there. You see people shirtless as well? Really? I've never seen anyone shirtless. I've seen shoeless, but I've, not, I've never seen shirtless. So like when it comes to stuff like this, it doesn't really matter what's in here. Oh shit, as long as it doesn't stick through like that. We can worry about that later though. The main thing is you just want something to catch highlights. Even if we stretch it a bit. It's just more interesting than a, a straight box. But we'll, we'll do like a... A cleanup pass, which is really important as well, where you delete like back faces and stuff, because that stuff really does annoy texture artists. Long way since the broken ship. Which broken ship? Is it the IT department? Deep water? What deep water? Oh, the finest hours. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, sorry, sorry. I haven't had notifications turned on. Yo, Dandy. Thanks for the follow. Wait, who are you then? <laughs> I mean, you have to say your real name. But, uh... What are we building? Oh, so um, what we've done is this is like a concept mesh, or well, a concept art I designed a while ago. And uh, we're doing an Autodesk sponsored stream where we're trying to rebuild this as a, con as a production mesh within 10 streams, three hours each. Oh, NPC survivor. <laughs> yeah, so we're doing it within, um, what is it, 30 hours. So, uh, so far this is the first 9 hours, which is pretty, pretty damn good. It actually went much faster than I thought. But what we've done is we've replaced the concept mesh with, like, kit bash parts, and we've, uh, retopoed, like, elements of the concept mesh for our paneling. And at the moment, we're kind of just, like, filling the gaps and cleaning the mesh up for now. Did I finish them across? No, we didn't finish it. We, uh, we're doing other stuff for the moment. We, I need to finish them across one day. Drunken nights. <laughs> and we're shelving it for a few months. Yeah, we'll probably show it for a few months. I want to get into ZBrush more. 80 a hour weeks. Yo, I'm going to uh, refill my water. I'll be back in a sec.
<laughs> you thought you lost me forever after I swapped programs and then disappeared. Nah, I, um... So I grinded for Twitch Partner. And we got it in the end. So, uh, thank you very much, everyone. That, uh, supported me for the, the six-month grind. But, uh, yeah. So we got Twitch Partner in the end. And, um... Yeah, I just needed a break. So I just disappeared. I was like, alright, I got I got partner, I don't have to stream anymore. <laughs> and I just stopped streaming for um for two weeks. Probably longer. So yeah, for this sort of stuff, oh that's actually pretty bad. I was gonna say if it doesn't really matter what's in here. We'll clean this stuff up in a bit. So see. I might do some basic cleanup. What do we have here? So this stuff's all paneling. So I'm kind of just grouping things based on what they are. This is my pretty standard like uh, grouping. I usually base things on like, I usually group things based on like things like panels, uh, mech, uh, details, stuff like that. Melee says hi. Jeez. Metal panel. So usually small generic stuff like that, I would count that as like detail. But then this I would count as mech. It doesn't really matter what it is. It's usually just up to whatever you want to do. But we could we can break this up more. Oops. Hmm. That's kind of strange. All right, no mind. So I might break it up into like uh, we could have like the engine mech stuff like that, and like the body mech. So, You guys, uh, you guys can't hear the music, right? Had to get your hands dirty for my work. What's the most important thing? The music? Alright, cool. That's good. Um, what's the most important thing you wish you learned when you first started out? In Maya? Uh, I got no idea. I mean, Maya was... I'd, I already came from Cinema 4D, so I kind of th already knew the general ideas of 3D, I just had to learn the program. Uh, 
Well, I didn't find it too bad, to be honest. Um, so I'm just breaking this into... Yeah, at the moment, we're just doing, like, organization stuff. I don't know how how well you can read my screen. Um... Can anyone even read my hierarchy text? It's pretty small. Oh yeah, saving is important. And the uh, incremental saving, of course, is uh, very important. Your sleep replacement, thanks for the follow. What am I building? So... Um, I designed this uh, aircraft uh, a few years ago, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to rebuild it as a production mesh in 10 streams, so 3 hours of stream, 30 hours, which is not very much time at all, so we're trying to uh, cut as many corners as we can and make it as fast as we can. So yeah, this is a stream sponsored by Autodesk, so uh, yeah. Um, I was wondering if someone who does this as a profession finds the 3D mouse type knobs useful and would you recommend or do you not care and a regular mouse or trackball do? Um, I use a tablet. I don't use a mouse. So I don't really have any uh, anything to say on my, on a mouse. I use a tablet for everything. Yeah, Corvée, how's it going? Um, let's see, oh, body mech. I think pen is, I really like the pen, because I can, especially because I use, um, like, I use these menus quite a lot. So if you have a, like, with a mouse, you'd have to move your hand, but with a pen, I can just flick my wrist. So if I want to go to multi cut. So let's see, if multi cut is here, all I can do is just shift right click and do that. And I can use cutting now. So that's why I really like using the tablet. It works well with those menus because I can just like flick my wrist in the direction I want to go. And just chuck this into the, uh, the engine mech. All I'm pretty much doing is just breaking... Well, that's kind of cool. I'm just breaking up the mech based on where it is. On the uh, the aircraft. I usually kind of do this as well. So, we can probably do that with the paneling. Actually, I might break these off into something else. So I'm going to call these ones like uh, L underscore en engine panel. And then I want to call these ones L engine body instead. Because they're not really like panels. Body.
You don't think Max allows tablets? Really? Are you sure? I mean, I, I don't know Max at all, but I can't imagine that would be a thing. So, let's see. Where's... Put the mech in here as well. Oops. So I usually kind of break things up into subsections like this. So we can put the, the thruster in there as well. Oops, that. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about going too descriptive with your naming. Like it doesn't matter if you name every single piece for what it is and make up a name for what it is, like it doesn't really matter. Like I usually just have very general names. Like say for example, like the very mech looking stuff, I'll just call mech and just random stuff which looks cool, I'll just call it detail. Like stuff like this. But yeah, once we have like a decent hierarchy set up, we're kind of set in that regard. So this I will just count as the body. Uh, body. Cool. Uh, let's see. It also helps when it comes to doing UVs because you can just select everything pretty, uh, pretty easily. Oh, so we don't want to see. Yeah, I know this isn't exactly the most exciting part, but um, it's pretty important. Being organized is quite important. Um, oh. Especially because like what happens quite a lot is you can be working and then someone will be like, hey, can we grab that to test somewhere else? And then you have to check into the pipeline. And to check into the pipeline, you need to have like naming and hierarchy. So if you set up like a very basic naming convention, if rigging want to look at this stuff earlier, they have a pretty good idea of what to expect when they get it. So this stuff can be quite handy. Just setting up like a, a pretty, as soon as you have like a pretty decent like first pass, just start doing your uh, naming convention. Wait, what's that? Oh, I forgot about that panel. You see that I grab a group, a piece, then grab the entire group. Okay, so if you use the up arrow keys on your keyboard, it'll it'll go up groups. So say for example, we have we have the engine here, right? If I select one piece and then go up, it'll grab. It will go to that group level. If I press up again. It will go to the next level, which is the mech group. Press up again, goes up to the engine. Press up again, goes to the full uh, full ship. So it's just pressing up on the uh, keyboard. I don't know how well it goes down. It makes it's much easier going up because it's just there's only one way for it to go. Oh my hotkeys! No, it's not a it's not a custom hockey thing. It's just a it's just default. Uh, default my I think. Just pressing up on the keypad. Um, so this stuff is center. I guess I would count this stuff as the body panels. Actually, I might count this as the cockpit panels instead.
For a mech like that, how many Udems would it take? Uh, what do you mean? Mech like what? Do you mean this entire vehicle? The entire vehicle might be... Depends, depends entirely on the resolution you need, but it could be like 20 to 30 Udems. So this kind of counts more as body than actual mech. For VFX as many as it takes. Uh, yeah, that's kind of true to an extent. Uh, you don't want to go too crazy. God, I'm not looking forward to uh, organizing the UVs of this thing. This is going to be painful. You have seen some things. Yeah, I know this part isn't exactly the uh, the most exciting, but it's something we all have to do. But um, it's not bad. I personally do like this stage. Like, this is usually what I also do if I'm, like, tired. Like, if I just i have had enough of... If I want to have a break from modeling, I'll usually do this. Like, cleaning. Because it just gives me a break from modeling, of dealing with topology. And But you're still being productive, you're still moving forward, which is good. So if I yeah, if I ever need a break, I just do this. Um, what are we doing? Oh, main body. Where's that? Oh. That should be done. All I'm doing is hiding the things that I've kind of done. So I can see what's like not grouped. So this and this. I'll go to mech. Eighty Udems with eight K textures. Yeah, I've done that. Um, get up here. El cockpit rubber. This can all be detail. On a net? <laughs> it sounds like you guys are having like a, a, a dick measuring contest. I, <laughs> I have more Udems than you have. Uh, let's see. Don't you feel that's a bit overkill there? That's a that's a lot of items. Um, oh me, body. All right.
Alright, so yeah, I've broken up my left and my right into uh, the left engine and the left main. And within both of those groups, they both have very consistent naming convention. Oh, well, except like, don't do that. Like, one of them said L panel, one said L panels. Just keep it both the same. So this is usually my kind of general naming convention I use. Just L, whatever the, the thing is, and break that up within... You know, panel, body, mech, thruster, detail, stuff like that. You didn't make them like that, so no, your problem, fair enough. Yeah, that's that's the thing, that's, that's the biggest problem with modelers, eh? Because they don't... <laughs> the modelers in general, like, the UDIM... UDIM count doesn't bother them at all. Because <laughs> they aren't the one doing the UVs. I mean, no, they are the one doing the UVs. But uh, they're not the one dealing with the textures. <laughs> this little finance we have to render the asset? Yeah, I know, right. Meanwhile, games are making stuff look absolutely amazing with a plane and a normal map. Uh, right. I'm just going to repeat the same convention that I had over there on here. For the texture side, does the new updates and tools like substance allowing painting across UDIMs help alleviate that? Uh, I have no idea. I'm not a texture artist. <laughs> but I wouldn't be able to talk on that. But I, I don't think... I don't think they use substance that much at work. And I can't imagine substance dealing with a thousand UDIMs. Um, let's see, main... What else do we have in here? Oh. This is oh, this is L. Uh, this is the L mech. L main. Like. So yeah, this makes it much easier like when I'm working on it or I have to go do UVs and stuff like that. It's much... Why is this here? It's much easier to uh, organize stuff if you just keep your scene organized in this way. Is that why compers get paid more? What's the main software in film production? Mari for sure. You can you can get a job in film without knowing substance, but you can't really get a job without knowing Mari. In film we're talking about as well, by the way. I know this sort of stuff might look kind of boring, but I actually do really enjoy doing this. <laughs> like the organizing stuff. It also kind of makes you feel like your asset is actually becoming an asset. And not just like a bunch of shapes smashed together. It's actually kind of becoming uh, organized. Yeah, usually um, everything has, uh, like if it's a group, it has like a, is it suffix? Yeah, suffix. 
If it's a group, it usually has a group suffix of some kind. It doesn't matter how you do it at home, you can do whatever you want. And geometry has like a geometry suffix. That's something just to keep in mind. So, uh, this stuff's gonna go to teammate body. What did I pull this one? Cockle panel, okay. If we uh if we wanted this cockpit to actually open and it was designed to, because I totally didn't <laughs> I totally did design it to do that to work properly. But um, if it was, we would also group this under its own group, but at the moment, it's fine like this. What's the geo suffix? It depends. It can just be geo. It depends what studio you're at. Like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say the specific ones, because I'm sure I probably can't, but um, yeah. Any, it can be, it can be anything. Like all, all studios have different naming conventions for their own pipelines. So, like when you're working at home, just make up something very, very simple. Geom or geo, anything like that. Anything is fine. As long as you can select uh, groups and uh, geometry separately, that's the only thing you really need to do. And I'm gonna put this in its own group now. So we can call this one. I don't know, what is this thing? Let's call this aircraft. So yeah, the usually like standard convention I'll usually have is like I'll have the, the name of whatever the thing is. Within that is broken up to left, center, and right. I mean this isn't finished yet, but I'll show you what we do. So we, we take this across here. And then we would uh Where's search and replace? Swap out the uh, the L underscore for the R underscore. Mm, I probably should have just done it to the top level for this example instead of naming all of the geometry. But um, yeah, what it's doing at the moment is it's replacing the L and R of all of the geometry, which is a decent amount. So I probably shouldn't have done that yet. Anyway, we've been streaming for an hour, so this is a pretty good time to uh, get up and have a bit of a stretch. So I'll be back in a sec.
Yeah. Well, that didn't take too long. But uh, yeah. So we'd have like the L center and the right group. Yo, Lucas E L R G. Thanks for the follow. And uh, the Onum. Thanks for the follow as well. Oh, shit. Would I consider working on video games? Uh, hell yeah. I, uh, I definitely would be interested. Yeah, I'm kind of, uh, at the moment I was thinking of learning um, Unreal, maybe. We'll see. Yeah, we've done some organizing stuff now. Maybe we should do... We do need to fix some stuff still, I think. Oh yeah, some of the stuff isn't even privileged. Well, that's 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 something we can definitely do. That. What about Z software that is not part of your sponsor property? What are you talking about? Oh, <laughs> I mean, it's not, it's not like I work for Autodesk or anything. I mean, we, we can talk about other programs. Like, they're just, Autodesk is just sponsoring this uh, series of streams. Like, I'm, I'm not a representative of Autodesk, and we don't need to pretend that other programs don't exist. But yeah, I uh, I do plan to do more ZBrush work in the upcoming future. I'm thinking of making a uh, feels really yeah yeah it's alright. You don't have to. We just can't slander stuff, which is fair enough. We can't talk uh talk smack about the stuff the softwares. But um yeah, I was thinking of making like a uh, like a Japanese temple in real time. Because that will force me to do a lot of like sculpting with like rocks and stuff like that. So I thought that might be a pretty cool exercise for me to undertake. So yeah, we'll be uh, doing... We'll be doing our uh, ZBrush on stream soon. Also, we promised that we would sculpt the snail in ZBrush. If I got partner. And we're definitely going to do it. We're going to. So what I'm doing is I'm making a Shinto shrine right. And I was thinking. We can put the snail on the shrine. <laughs> you guys treat the snail like a cult anyway. So we might as well just. Uh, build a shrine dedicated to the snail. Oops. Does the tablet serve you well in ZBrush? Oh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't use ZBrush without a tablet. I I have no idea how. There are some people, I don't, but I don't know how people can use ZBrush with a mouse. Yeah, if you wanted to use ZBrush, definitely get a tablet. This is all done. Yeah, the cool thing about, like, when you triple edge your paneling like this, and then you soften the normals, you can visualize the paneling without actually having to, like, see it smooth, which is really cool. Yeah, 
Impossible. Yeah, I, I didn't think you would like to hear about that. <laughs> I've seen, I do know someone that uses a, uh, a mouse for ZBrush. <laughs> How does that make you feel, Lucas? Uh, I don't know why I did this. I'll have to replace this again later anyway. That's for me. <laughs> yeah, I use a tablet for everything. Like, I don't even... Like, Maya, I use a tablet. Even, like, just when I'm searching the internet, I just use a tablet for everything now. The only thing I use for my mouse is sometimes a program will force me to use the scroll wheel. That's the only time I'll touch my mouse. Um. Maybe we can do some basic UVs for this sort of stuff. Just to break it up a bit. Hopefully we should be able to get all this done. We're, we're going to be pretty relaxed with the UVs, since we have such limited time anyway. I usually do like to use automatic, just to see what I get. A lot of the time it's pretty good. I mean, it's not, it's not perfect, but it's definitely like a good start. Um, arrange the layout. Girls. Yeah, don't do that. So what I usually do is I work out whatever the biggest piece is. I think it was this one. Yeah, that's probably this one. To be fair, I probably couldn't grab that stuff as well. Where's this? Oh, that's that. Ah, I'll leave it detached. It doesn't matter too much. So usually, like, you can do stuff like this to find what the, like, the resolution of the biggest piece is. And that will help you decide, like, how much, like, resolution to fill up. Like, maximum, if you really need to go high res. But, um, I think I have a UV shader. Get rid of my history. I don't even remember if I have a UV. Maybe I deleted my UV thing. I thought I usually keep it on my desktop. Nope. Oh, okay. Never mind. My UV thing is gone. <laughs> well, uh, we can do UV UVing next time. I'll download my thing again. Yeah, we can do UV next time. Rip UV checker. Yeah, I just have a... You can... You just Google them and you can find them pretty easily. I suppose I can just find it again. Uh... All it pretty much is is just an image file that we, uh... God, that, that's not it. This one. Yeah, you can find heaps of this stuff. You can just Google UV checker and you'll find heaps of these things. Save onto my desktop. So all, you, all we're doing is just making a new shader and then making a file input. And then we plug that in. So we can't see anything at all at the moment, but as soon as you press 6, which is the shaded view, then we can see it. So I usually use this. So all this is... Uh, did I close the UV layout? 
So all this is, is like one of these tiles is the image, which is, where's the picture? Oh, that's the wrong one, this one. <laughs> so yeah, that's the image there. So as you scale here, it lines up on here. Usually I just scale this like to four times. We got this, go to the input. Uh, the place to texture one, and I just repeat four times. It's a pretty, I guess, accurate representation of like a 4K texture sort of thing. So like, that's a pretty good resolution. Like it doesn't pixelate that much really. So yeah, I'll I'll probably use this as my. Actually, no, we can probably go bigger. That might be a bit overkill though. We don't really need that much. Like, just because you can go crazy Udem count doesn't mean you should. Because someone still do, still has to deal with that. Is there any part of the model that you haven't used sub-D? Um, in general, when I'm working, I try to keep... If everything is sub-D, I usually try and keep everything sub-D or everything poly. It just makes it much easier if it's consistent between them. Yo, Chernobyl, are we in the um are we in the science and technology uh part at the moment? Any any scripts or polygons? Um Not really. I usually like I usually keep Maya pretty vanilla just because it's just easiest to move from studio to studio to studio if you keep it like vanilla. Why not the art section this time? I was just checking to see what happens. Andrew the science guy. I mean the art section is kind of an interesting place. But yeah, so what I've done is I've gotten here, I've gotten the um, the textile density of the pieces. So 30. Let's just go 35 actually. I was curious what if I was curious what viewers would be like if I swapped it to um, art. No, I swapped it out of art into science. Because I know like, like Crimson and stuff did that. But I've noticed we have less viewers. So maybe we should go back to art. Back, back to the anime waifus. <laughs> oh, I didn't name the texture. We should probably do that. Um, UV. So yeah, now might be a decent time to do like a base level of UVs, just because if we run out of time, we're in a good spot. We can probably just auto pack the stuff to be fair. Damn, this isn't going to take up many uterums at all. I mean, this, this stuff is not super optimal or whatever, but it doesn't matter too much. I, I usually try and make this stuff Straighter? I mean, we probably can straighten UVs, actually. Um, where is straighten? I've lost it. Oh. Straighten UVs? Oh, alright, never mind. We can just do that. Problem solved. I usually try and keep them consistent as well. So maybe we can have them like... I do use the auto pack every now and then. It's not... It's pretty decent for like, if you don't have much time. Wouldn't the texture bend if it's straightened? I mean... It's very subtle, and it kind of would be better if it bent anyway. Oh no, so what you were talking about, that bent part is this. 
But I mean, so much stuff is procedurally textured these days anyway, so I don't think it would be end of the world. One of the, ma the main important thing though, as you'll see here, is the scales are the same, and they run in the same direction. That's the most important thing. So you want... This should be that way. You want your, um, you want your UVs to run the same direction. That one should probably be rotated, actually. Yeah, so this is what you want. You want everything to run the same way and be the same scale. That's the most important one. Yo, Chernobyl, can you change the um can you change where we are to up? Uh what sounds good? So with this sort of stuff, I've already pre UV'd, UV'd them in chunks. Usually I would just use like the textile density thing to like match them. But the problem is if I use the textile density, it'll scale it'll scale the individual uh, components and then if I like auto pack them it'll be a mess since they're already nice I'll probably just do that stuff by eye so when I first did this I would have used the textile density thing but um I'll probably just do this one by eye and like with greebles like panels it's much more important but things like uh greebles as long as it's in the ballpark it's not the end of the world I just want to see what the scale difference is like between these. Yeah, since I've already got like a pretty decent layout anyway. Oh, actually, we might have to break this up anyway. Fair enough then. All right, maybe break this off into chunks. Game art? Uh, art. I don't think creative exists anymore, does it? Oh. Damn, to hit that resolution, they need to be scaled up a decent amount. Not too much. Yeah, that's, something like that's probably fine. And you can probably just... If it like if you have something like this, honestly, if you do, if you just like scale it down a little bit, it's not the end of the world. Whoa. Come on, get off! Oh, these things are annoying. We don't have to be like super optimized and get in film. Like, every single Udom doesn't have to be fully, like, used up. Yeah, Knives, Chow, thanks for the follow. We don't have to use every single Udom full up. Like, it doesn't matter too much. Like, organization usually comes first. We can probably condense this much more later, but... I don't know, if I, if I just auto-pack this, it might make me kind of feel sad. Uh, to be fair, that might actually be fine though. Yeah, screw it. Since we have limited time, let's just auto, let's just auto pack everything. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> it it works. I usually try not to auto pack that much. It depends what it is though. Because we will have so many of these things, I'm just going to do this to at least just condense them down. Oh, uh, poor UVs. No, I'm going to do that. That's made me feel bad. <laughs> I'll unpack them.
If they weren't already like UV'd and laid out, I would probably use auto packing, but we can just leave this for now. Whoa, we've been going for an hour and a half already. Okay. So the modeler does UVs also. It depends. It depends where you are. Sometimes the texture artist does it, sometimes modeler does it. Yeah, but like with UVs, like it it usually depends, like you know how I said talking about like fighting your battles, like with the paneling, definitely make sure your paneling all like runs the same direction. But when it comes to like greebles, a lot of this stuff will just be procedurally textured anyway, so this stuff doesn't matter as much. But the panel details, like definitely invest your time into making your UVs nicer here. Oh, there's guns here. And gone eagles? What are eagles? I mean, I know what eagles are, but what are end gone eagles? Have you thought about uploading your streams to YouTube? Yeah, man, all the uh, all the streams are on YouTube. I mean, the Autodesk ones are not the so the all the Autodesk streams are on YouTube, but not my normal streams because we usually listen to music and. YouTube will just strike everything. So the normal streams are not on YouTube, but everything, all of like the Autodesk, these ones will be on YouTube. Three of them already are there. Oh shit. And this one will be up like right after. So that needs more supporting edges. Yeah, no worries. Oh, okay, there's an end gun here somewhere. Oh. Uh, they said there was an end gun here. Oh, there we go. Yo, so we've been going for an hour and a half, so I'm going to have a quick two minute break, you know, stretch your legs, get up, have a walk around. I'll be back in a sec.
Yo, Aaron, how's it going, man? When a model needs to be blown up in effects, what is the best way to approach it? Sub D or poly? Uh, sub D, always. Usually. Um, the biggest, like, the problem with sub D, not sub D, the biggest problem with, like, effects in general is you need to build everything as closed objects. So that's the main difference between, um, that's the main difference between modeling an asset like this and for effects is we have to have everything closed. If, for example, you couldn't have something like this, this would have to be a closed object. Watertight, yeah, watertight is what I meant. So yeah, for effects, everything has to be closed. Hey, yeah, I'm I'm working on that. Well, I have worked on it. So what I'm doing here is, like when I imported some other meshes, I had extra random shaders. So I just deleted the unused shaders. So does the effects mesh mean having no overlapping or clipping? It depends on the studio. Sometimes, like sometimes they will be, they'll be okay if you have clipping, but they're separate objects, like this will be okay sometimes. In some other studios, you would have to make sure it was not overlapping like this. You would have to make sure it is like this. It depends on the studio. A lot of the ones I've worked at, the water, the overlapping is okay. So like the best thing to do is simply just talk to the effects artists and just ask them what they need. Like don't try and guess what they want, just ask them. Like always just ask your team not your team, ask the people on your team, you know, what are their needs? Goes for like anything, if you're a text, if you're working a texture artist or a rigger, like as soon as you start the asset or you know who's on the, the asset with you, go and talk to them. Like, before I even do this, I will go up, I'll get up off my desk, go to the texture artist and be like, hey, this is the asset, is there anything in particular you need? And then usually like halfway through, I might show them what's best practice for what. Usually, um, yeah, I'll show them my work in progress UVs. Like, is this fine with you? And then usually they'll say, yeah, or can you mind, do you mind doing this? This will help me out. What is the uh, best practice for what? Yo, how's it going? Whoa, super sensitive. Whoa.
Wait, what am I doing? Oh, there's only two edges. Ask them, but if you just have to wing it? Um, well, that's what I mean. Like, you shouldn't wing it. You should just ask them. <laughs> it, de it depends on the studio and how they do their effects. Cool. Most places I've been at, they're okay with just having um, the meshes can collide if they're separate objects and the meshes themselves are watertight. So that's usually w what I've done. But you know, if someone comes over and says, no, we need something different, then you have to give them what they need. Because they, they also have to do their own job. So you usually have to accommodate the other disciplines. Yeah, I usually I wouldn't just wing things in general. Like just just ask. It takes it doesn't take very long to like, you know, just go have a chat. This is actually kinda of decent. Alright, I'll just use that one then. That's pretty ugly. But yeah, communication is the biggest, most important thing in VFX in general. Like that's what any like just I mean any job really communication is always key. Don't don't waste time just guessing. Just just ask someone. Am I still working on the environment? Yeah, I'm still working on the environment. I haven't done it on stream because what we're doing, what we've been doing recently is a stream sponsored by Autodesk, which is obviously this one. And uh, yeah, that will come back to stream later though. Actually, I might just leave that. No one's going to see it. But yeah, we're still working on that environment. I meant for personal projects in general, should we just get used to the extra mile? Um, what's the thing? I have no idea about your personal project. Like, I've, I would ask an effects artist about that. They would probably answer better. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about doing effects meshes for personal work unless you are actually going to do like effects simulations. And in that case, you probably know best yourself, based on what you need from the effects mesh. Oops. But I don't, I don't think there's a point of um. I don't think there's a purpose of like uh someone doing an effects mesh at home for practice. I don't think because you'll you'll learn that on the job. There's. Um, that goes into the C peacock panel. So now at this stage, like anything I do, I add or change, I just simply add to the hierarchy group I want. Because we've set up our hierarchy already. Yeah, are you talking about just doing like an effects mesh for practice, or do you mean like doing an effects mesh for an actual job? For, I mean, for your own personal project. So for me, for example, like I, I don't know why the effects artists want specific things. I just do what they ask, pretty much. Like if they request I do something a specific way, I just do it because that's what they need to get the job done. I might ne not necessarily know the difference of why my other mesh wouldn't be good enough, but if they ask for it, you just kind of have to do it. I kind of really dislike this 
panel edge here, which was in the concept mesh. So I'm going to defy the concept a little bit. It is what it is. I just model it like you're modeling it now. Oh, okay. Yeah, one of the main things for working in the industry is you kind of have to be flexible in a to a degree to model what other people want because it's not it's not just your job. Well, it's not just your task. I mean. How's it going, Kove? Are you getting your work done? All your stuff? Oh yeah, I know you've been lurking, but you said you were doing stuff, right? So sometimes I might do creative decisions like this because I, I think it will make it, the work better. Like say for example, this line just goes down, but it's a pretty minor thing, but maybe I should make them the same level first. But I'd rather have like the line continue. Like sometimes I'll do stuff like that if it looks like it makes more sense. And looking this line continuing I think makes more sense. I mean don't go too crazy. Like don't don't literally just redesign the entire asset. But like minor things like this sometimes aren't that big of a deal. You're concepting potion bottles? That's awesome. What are you concepting potion bottles for? Potion bottles, aka cocktails. I d yeah, I designed the ship. Gonna soften this. Yeah, I designed this aircraft a few years ago. Oh, is there no? Oh no, there is. No way. So yeah, glass should have thickness because we're trying to emulate the real world and glass in the real world has thickness. So we have to add it. Yo, cheers. It's for a small indie project? That's pretty cool, man. <laughs> yeah the ship is from when I did like um I did like a spaceship a day for 30 days uh, a few years ago that was pretty fun okay so this is actually this is actually a center thing not a left or right there we go over. Oh, this is meant to be a coffee panel as well. And this one should be as well when we uh when we fix it. Can't wait for the thirty snails a month challenge. Jeez, no way, no chance. 
I bet you're all are looking forward to doing the snail in ZBrush. That's going to happen for sure. We'll put the uh, we'll put the snail on the shrine in the uh, in the temple. You missed by now. It's all right. All the uh, all this stuff will be on YouTube, so you can always go check it out. Snail contest? Oh God, no. This is kind of bad. There's some hidden nuggets of wisdom every 15 minutes. I don't know about that. I'm just smashing shapes together. But I'm glad you're enjoying this room. Yeah, no worries. That curves? It is curves. For a noob, it's good. <laughs> Cheers. Yo, Rexilla, thanks for the, uh, thanks for the tier one, I appreciate it. I, uh, appreciate the support. But yeah, if anyone finds the streams, you know, educational and, you know, want to support, you know, I greatly appreciate all the, uh, the subs. And you get access to all the very fun emotes. <laughs> like the snail. And the, uh. The industry standard <laughs> emote. That one's always a fun one. <laughs> Crimson, please. But that connection was terrible. Oh, this is higher. That explains it. A little bit. <laughs> Getting uh, creative with the emotes. Yeah, I could just subdivide it that much. Ugh, that's terrible. Let's not do that. Let's fix that first. And then maybe we can just subdivide it. Can the snail be a bobblehead on my dashboard? Oh god. Just have a snail in the corner of the stream, maybe. Yeah, that's probably better, actually. Is it meant to be curved? That doesn't look right. I don't think my past self would want this to be curved. Maybe it did. Right. Not end of the world. I'll just keep it for now. <laughs> I 
Oh, in the dashboard of the plane. I get what you mean. I don't know if we'll... I don't even know if we'll have the time to finish the asset, let alone have a, a snail on the dashboard. Yeah, speaking of the cockpit, we should probably block something out. Let's get rid of that. Hula snail chooses. You're going too far with the snail thing. Alright, so what should we do for the cockpit? I'm literally just gonna kit bash elements. So let's just guess the chairs are in the middle roughly. So this could go like behind the chair maybe. Do a mech snail. Someone um Puteo designed a mech snail and we meant to do it but we just ne <laughs> we just never got around to doing it. I'm just kind of looking for an interesting silhouette. Like, this stuff doesn't really matter what's in here. Like, this is kind of just for, like, if the light happens to catch it. Then it looks like there's something interesting in here. Should we actually bother making a chair? Maybe we can just stick something in. There you go. <laughs> Whatever this is, this can be the chair. <laughs> like, usually, like, I would just find a chair from somewhere else. Usually... Usually we build a bunch of assets for one show. So if we ha we had other aircraft, we would just steal a chair from another aircraft. But this can be a this can be the cockpit chair. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> this thing looks so stupid. But it'll be fine. The idea is it's just meant to be something that, like, it's just meant to be, like, something that catches light. We did start it, it abandoned? Yeah, I know, I feel bad. We never, we never finished the mecha snail, unfortunately. So we need to find something for the cockpit. This thing's kind of cool. We can just steal this for the console. Maybe something like here. We just want something that kind of breaks that sharp line. This stuff doesn't matter too much. What you can do is just put the layer, I mean, the layer. You can put the glass on a separate layer so you can just hide it when you don't need it. Go pick, pick as new? Thanks for the follow.
Like we we broke the UVs of the stuff already, but we can we can kind of fix it later. But already we kind of have like a pretty decent cockpit, and we did almost nothing. It was kind of for free. Um, black. Oh yeah, we should save it as well. Yo, cheers, thanks. So yeah, people who haven't been here before, I am um, I'm a hard service modeler that works in the film industry. Worked on a few like Star Wars projects and Transformers and stuff like that. Some pretty cool stuff. Whoa, why is it going so slow? Yo, Chembot, thanks for the follow. Cool. Is this like an actual bot? <laughs> yeah, I might modify it. So we have to make it like fit in a bit more snug. We can't have it like just randomly floating. How long it takes to master this program? Oh, I don't think I'd ever mastered a program. <laughs> I don't think anyone ever masters the programs. Um, but I've been working in the film industry for about seven years now, I think. No, not an actual bot working on it. Fair enough. Yeah, thanks for the here. Uh, thanks for the gifted sub. I uh, appreciate it. I'm probably just going to put like just simple cube for the actual the seat itself. There's no point like getting too much stuff. Very likely no one's ever going to see this. But at least, say for example, I don't know, this was like, if this was like a parked vehicle and there was like an overhead shot, at least there would be something there. What is my origin story? Um, it's a pretty long one. We can talk about it if people want. I <laughs> like it. Makes me sound like a, like a legend or something. <laughs> the Tale of Andrew. Oh yeah, Channel's got a link to it there. But yeah, I started as a um I started as a runner in NPC back in the day. Where do you find inspiration reference for designing Greebles? Um looking at real world stuff like um things like like factories have like a lot of robotic arms which build it 
things now. Like that's pretty cool stuff for like Greeble reference. Um, this thing here is actually kind of based on the cockpit uh, console of an aircraft from uh, what's it called? Cowboy Bebop. So like Greeble, it depends like what I want. Like I, it depends. Like if I'm doing like some sci-fi spaceships, I'll look at like real world things. But I also look at just cool, interesting shapes, other stuff. Alright, let's just steal this. Model kits? Yeah, you can look at model kits. Model kits always have cool stuff. I mean, like, Greebles in general do come from traditional model kits. Like, that's where they, like, the original Greebles come from. From, like, things like Star Wars and stuff back in the day. That's yeah, probably enough for now. Uh, let's see. So with stuff like the cockpit, I would probably just put it all under the center group and just merge a lot of the stuff together. Like, I don't want to worry too much about this sort of thing. Um... Where's transparency? Oh, transparency. Yeah, like something like this we can get away with for like an interior. Kinda cool. Trying to photo scan it? Yeah, that could be kinda cool. Like that will give you a cool base you can start with. Look at this. Look at all this free geometry we got. Um C underscore cockpit interior. Actually, no, that already exists. In that case, we'll just jump all that into. Interior. So yeah, that ended up being pretty nice. I mean, we can spend more time on the chair if we wanted to, but for just a just a really random blocking, it's pretty cool. This will do the job. We have some interesting stuff to catch highlights. We have like a little console thing to like break up that silhouette. You got inspired from Jay Mikado's presentation? Yeah, Jay is legit. Well, these we need to fix though. We can't have these punching through. Wait, what is this? Nothing. We'll get rid of it. Like stuff in here, I wouldn't worry about. Like below, it's more for like, so you can kind of see it from these angles. The <laughs> snake is watching stream. All right, I'll be back in two seconds. I'm just gonna have a quick break.
orange dream? Is that a type of snake? Yo, after the um after the Autodesk streams are done, we should go back to doing like uh we can go back to doing like sub goals and potential like cooking streams and stuff like that if you guys are interested again. I know people enjoyed the uh the cooking streams and the chat designing the cocktails, that was pretty fun. You saw my Instagram fe feed? Yeah, we did a few cooking streams actually. We did two of them. So maybe we can, um, you know, after the Autodesk streams, we can go back to doing the, uh, the cooking streams again. Uh, we can probably get away with this. Always down for some cooking streams. I haven't, I haven't cooked that much recently. Like especially after things kind of opened up a bit. Oh, we, we definitely need to fix whatever this is. Yeah, like the stage we're at now is kind of just like the finishing stage really like we have the good general layout for everything now it's about just making things look nice like all this stuff is penetrating at the moment which isn't cool like a, a degree of it isn't too bad but we we want to have it at least kind of subtle like doing stuff like this at least is nicer than what we had before Like one of the key things is to make things look like they actually work. So actually, actually plugging stuff in to things definitely helps. Yeah, this is floating, so there must be a circle or something below this one. Yeah, this is definitely kind of like the comfortable stage of the asset. This is when like like the main chunk of everything is here and now it's just like refinement. So this is when you can start to feel good, like feel like confident in finishing the work. And you can give like at this point is when you can start giving like accurate estimate like estimations of when you can actually finish it. How often do you have to kick it to other departments? It depends entirely on the project. At this point, you can start showing it to people like the supervisors and stuff. But um, yeah, it depends entirely on the uh, it depends entirely on the project or the task. Like, yeah, things happen all the time. Like I don't know, rigging might want to check something out, or layout need to start doing stuff but they need to see what the vehicle looks like i mean they need to start placing it so then you can give them like temp ones and in this sorts of position like if we need to give this to someone 
we can simply just go into every group and just bulk rename everything and we would have a production ready asset we can just check in even if it's not finished we can still check this in now and it's in a pretty good state cooking stream when i don't know we'll have to start setting more so some more sub goals we have 62 subs at the moment maybe we can set a a sub goal of 100 100 um subs for a cooking stream again like we used to you're hard hard true thanks for follow and benj1989 thanks for follow as well yeah i won't put it on this i won't put it on the screen until the order desk streams are done but we can we can go back to the uh the sub goals and stuff 100 subs for uh, more cooking streams Yeah, at this point, we're kind of just going around and, like, uh, you know, cleaning things up, finishing bits we missed. Like, I didn't... I forgot to triple-edge this thing. Like, usually when I work, I try and get the volume of whatever the thing is out first, and then we can do refining later. Yeah, this pinching is going to be annoying. Usually the only way to deal with pinching is just to add more topology. I might do that first, actually. So what I, all I'm going to do here is just add more edge loops. But uh, I'm just going to hold shift here, and it's going to bump it out to match the curvature. But it breaks it there, but we can kind of just clean up this way a bit. So I just added a bit more edge loops in the area that's going to be affected. Like if there's a little bit of pinching, it's not the end of the world. Oh, shit. It just depends on like how close it's seen. Just condense this area a bit more. Another thing we can do is probably just use these edges actually. But I think this will still pinch. Yeah, that's not good. Alright, undo that. I mean, the thing is, like, you're always going to get a degree of pinching anyway. That's not terrible. I don't think this is going to be a good idea, actually. I mean, it will get rid of the streaking, but it will probably pinch it at the end. I don't think, like, there will always be a degree of pinching. 
Like, that's not too bad, I guess. Like, I wouldn't stress too much about getting, like, literally zero pinch. Because it also depends on the material of the vehicle anyway. Like, I don't... The only time it really matters, like, really matters, is if you're doing, like, a really sleek, elegant car. That's, like, straight out of the factory. I imagine this sort of vehicle will be banged up a bit. So if there is a bit of a pinch... It's not the end of the world. I definitely wouldn't spend too long, like, worrying about it. Oops. You'd be kind of uh, surprised what you can get away with. To be fair, like, even if this was like a hero vehicle, we would probably go around denting the edges to kind of break the, the perfect CG-ness of the vehicle. That would be, that would be fun. Hey, what happened here? Oh. Yeah, channel. Well, thanks for uh, for the linking. Wait, why is this not lining up? Oh, this came out. Okay, there you go. Talking about snakes in the chat.
How dense does the topology need to be? Um, depends. How dense do you need? It's based entirely on uh, what you're trying to achieve. Yeah, how dense does your topology need to be? There's no real uh, answer for that. It's based entirely on what you're uh, you're trying to make, as as much as you need to get the shape. But I mean, don't go too crazy. Like, for example, like you can get away with these panels being like a at a pretty pretty reasonable, um, you know, amount. Like you you don't want to do stuff like this. You don't want to have like massive, like long polygons to avoid that. But you also, you don't need to have your panels like this level. Because it's going to be subdivided at render time. So something kind of reasonable like this, you can, this is like low poly enough that we can use. But it gives us enough topology to subdivide and have the shape we want. Yeah. Pull that down a bit. Yeah, that's a bit better. So yeah, there's no there's no answer to like there's no real answer to how much topology you need. You just need as much as you need to do the uh, the job. Like obviously this is much higher res because we have to model on a curved surface while also having these sharp edges. But that's kind of, that's something you, you'll pick up over time. Just based on like getting used to what you can get away with. But then in saying that, yeah, don't be so bare bones. Like you, like this is for me at least, like I know some people do this, but for me at least, some people will do stuff like this. Say for example, they have... Pretend we have this curved surface. So some people will have, so it renders like this, it's everyone's happy, it's smooth. But some people will leave the base mesh like this. So for me personally, I don't like seeing that big of a change between the silhouette. So for me, this would be my base mesh. Well, I'll probably just duplicate it first. For me, I would rather this was my base mesh. Because when we when we smooth them, this one barely changes and this one changes quite a lot. So this is as far as like how much topology to add. This is usually what I do. As long as the silhouette doesn't change that much, that's my plan. Like sometimes people will have like tires and stuff that they'll keep super low poly. The problem with that is, say for example you have spokes that you want to stick into this, you can't really see where it penetrates with the tire because topology changes so much at render time. Where with this one it's going to stay very consistent. So this is as far as like how much topology, as long as the base shape isn't changing that much, I think is a, a good amount. Do you play Fall Guys? Oh god. We could play Fall Guys on stream if you guys wanted. That was super fun. We um We played Fall we played Fall Guys with Crimson. That was super funny. It wasn't on stream though. Maybe in the future we can do it on stream. Nuggets of wisdom, yeah, no worries. I don't know, I don't, since obviously this is like a CG, did you try to drag him down with you? The doom, your doom. Nah, me and Crimson, we were, we were real assholes. <laughs> that was so funny. Me and Crimson, we got to the end of a map, and we just stood there and waited for everyone to come, and then there was one person left, and we just grabbed him and pushed him off the edge. <laughs> oh, that was so good. The best part is, like, it was the end of the round, so that we were the last two people you could spectate. So everyone got to watch us <laughs> throw some random dude off the edge. It was good fun. Yeah, 
But yeah, we can do like, I don't know. Obviously, since my stream is known for CG, um, I haven't really thought of playing video games on it. But we could totally, you know, play some Fall Guys or something like that for fun sometime if you guys were interested. Test. Hey, no worries. How's it going? Well, we've already we've already been going for two hours and thirty minutes. Just checking that the chat was working. Yeah, the chat is working. We have it set to follow only chat because that way, at least when Blender users come in to tell me about our Lord and Savior Blender, they at least gave me their follow. Um, wanted to ask what are we modeling? I can show you what we're modeling. Yeah, that... <laughs> no joke, that's why it's set to follow only chat. So I at least got the follow before they came in to hassle me. <laughs> oh, that's good fun. Uh, oh, main body... Uh, mech. Yeah, so what we're doing is, I designed this aircraft a few years ago and as a concept mesh. And this is a stream series sponsored by Autodesk. And what we're doing is we're trying to recreate this as a production mesh in 10 streams, 3 hours a stream. So, so far we have, we're almost to the end of the 4th stream. So, this is what we've got within 12 hours. Pretty, pretty solid. Oh, excuse me. So yeah, we took this really bad, um, this really bad uh, concept mesh I made, and we s extracted elements of it and retopologized the paneling. We used a parts library from a kit I have to, you know, kit bash a lot of the details and stuff, and. The general idea is it's kind of simulating my job at uh, work. So I work in the film industry for people that haven't been here before. I worked on a few Star Wars and Marvel and Transformers and stuff like that. So it's kind of simulating a very tight deadline. So we're trying to cut corners without cutting the, um, the quality of the model. So we're going to try and model, do the hierarchy and do the UVs within 30 hours. Which is incredibly hard. You would like to do learn how to do good kit bashing. I mean, we're still going to be doing kit bashing. We still have, we still have plenty of like holes and sections left over. A lot of the kit bashing stuff is penetrating. We, I mean, like you can see, there's massive gaps in here. So you haven't really missed too much. So I wouldn't be worried about that sort of stuff. You can definitely you can definitely see a lot more kit bashing. We're gonna be kit bashing for a while. I mean all kit bashing really is is just grabbing a few pieces, duplicating and moving it. The key is to make it not look to kit bash, which is the hard part. Problem is like that looks like a very obvious scaled up version of that, so we just need to modify this one so it's not not the same. That doesn't really help. I think that's actually the key. Yeah, that changed it quite a lot. You struggle to make it fit together? Um, For me, usually I focus on putting like a big shape. Like this is the big feature pipe or this is the big feature component. And then I'll use smaller components to dress it and make it look better. That's pretty much it. That's my... That's my general thought behind kit bashing. Well, there's a massive hole in here. Interesting. But yeah, don't worry, there's plenty of kit bashing still. We still have uh, six streams left to do this. Your PC would sob trying to render this? <laughs> we 
Will you do stream on modeling kits? Um, I wish we had the stream. I made a I made another kit bash kit on the stream, uh, like six months ago. Unfortunately, I don't think we have that anymore. Cool. I wonder how well this will fit in. That's uh kind of convenient. That fit quite well actually. Marmoset? Oh, I don't know anything about Marmoset. So I work in a film, by the way, so I, I don't work in games. It took several weeks. Nah, Channel, it took two months to do it, didn't it? it? Took a while. So we don't... We don't need any of this. Like, this is a really key important thing with, uh, like, working in the film industry is, like, get rid of what you don't see. There's there's no point of having all this extra wasted topology and UV space, which is kind of going to be thrown away for no reason. Yo, Jade Smith Digital Art. Artist, thanks for the follow. Hello there. Google SketchUp user. <laughs> I didn't know there was Google SketchUp users <laughs> anymore. Why would this matter? Why would what matter? Do you mean the extra geometry? Um, because... I'll show you. Okay, this is a this will be a very good example. Say we have this right, and we go to UV this thing. So I'm just going to use a method I like, which is called the modify unitize UV. Move and so. All right, cool. We have our we have our UV for this thing. So say for example, we have this right. See how nice and condensed this is. Imagine we had we didn't delete the hidden geometry. Come on, Mike. We have that. Now look at these two extra massive circles. We have. can you see like we've just wasted UV space by these things that no one will see. So that's why we delete it. Because now we've saved a lot of... Uh, now we've saved much of, like much space on the thing. So the thing is, in mod like when we model the asset, right, we're not the ones texturing it. The texture artist textures it. So when the texture artist comes across a model and half of the texture, like the UDEM space, is taken by something that they won't even see, it's just a pain in the ass for them to like work out what is even worth texturing. <laughs> you could just collapse the circles. What do you mean by collapse the circles? But in that case, you might as well just delete. I mean, that you can scale them down to whatever size you want, but you might as well just still just delete them. There's no... They provide literally nothing aside from extra polygons. Like, there's literally no, no benefit to doing this. The only, Like, when... What we could do, though, is say, for example, if we're doing an effects mesh, or, like, a, a mesh that, you know, we need to... It needs to explode, and everything needs to be closed. This is a very normal thing we do. Oh, come on. Say we did have to include all this stuff. Um, is it working? God, Maya's chugging along at the moment. If we did have to include these, I mean, sure, you could probably just, like, overlap these things. And scale them. To, actually, no, some programs don't like overlapping. 
we could just scale them down really small. Like, so this is what I would do if we had an effect. Do this as an effects mesh. I would just scale them down really small. But we're not doing effects mesh, so there's no real point of needing them. I mean, this might look like just a few extra polygons. But you, when you think of an entire asset being made up of just a few extra polygons, you might end up with an extra 50,000 polys. Or, or even millions. I've seen... I've seen texture artists get annoyed with millions of polys that aren't seen. What's an effects mesh? Effects mesh is for things like, um, it depends, like if the mesh is going to explode, or if they're going to do like water sims with it, like stuff like that. But yeah, I, I'm not kidding, like I, I do have a, like texture artist friends that complain about the fact that they have to go through and clean up, um, like millions of hidden polygons. I'm not kidding. Like, don't. But the thing is, like, texture artists they do they remember this sort of stuff. So, <laughs> don't don't become one of the people they uh they don't like. It's much easier just to uh just to clean up your mesh yourself. Yeah, it's for when meshes need to be like fraction stuff. Oh, no wonder it was slow. We have the other whole side of the ship still there. Yes, Jesus. But yeah, we've got uh, 18 more minutes, so if anyone has any like last minute questions, let me uh, know. Good morning. It'd be really cool to see this textured in the new substance painter with Udem support. Maybe. If someone wants to texture it, that could be kind of cool. I know Arvin might be interested in doing a like, look dev maybe. Maybe he could texture it. That could be kind of cool. We could do a collab. Do I use substance or Mari? Neither. I don't texture. But I've been trying to get into substance. Not because substance is uh, industry stand. Well, like I'm, I've been trying to use substance for like my personal projects. Like what I use at home isn't necessarily what like we use at work. If that makes sense. Like for this, obviously, I'm I'm working as if I'm at work. But a lot of the time, I at home I like to do concept instead of production. So I'll just use whatever. When you experiment on designs, how much time do you give yourself before moving on? I mean... Texture in Photoshop? No, I texture in GIMP. <laughs> no. I mean, I, I don't design. I'm in, I'm in production, so I, I'm not in the design phase. The design is already done. I'm in the uh, production phase. We take the design and we make it... Are we making reference for this? Are we, are we using reference for this? Um, I had a concept. So I, I did the original concept. And Channel, do you have a link to the concept? <laughs> so I just rebuilt my own concept mesh. So at this point, I kind of am just building my concept. Oh, all right. That's not the concept art, but that's close enough. So yeah, I blocked out this mesh a while ago. But where's the actual uh, artwork? That's not. 
So I did these, uh, I did these like one hour spaceship designs um, a few years ago. So we're just building this one. So I'm not really looking at too much reference right now. Like we're kind of, we've kind of hit what we need to already. Like say for example, if I wanted to add smaller details on the side, I could look at real aircraft and just, you know, add stuff like that. Like one thing I do like is, say for example, I know if, I mean this aircraft I, I'm imagining more as like a, like a racing vehicle that skims across the ground. But for example, I know like real conventional planes have things like antennas that when they get struck by lightning, lightning gets redirected through the body to the antennas so it doesn't fry all the systems. So then I might do stuff like this, which is based on real aircraft. Like I might add like minor details like that based on reference. But this wouldn't really suit what we're doing at the moment. So I'll just take that off. But doing that mesh, even though most of it is kibash, is pretty impressive. I mean, so far, we have, we, we kind of do have a production-ready asset after 12 hours, which is pretty good. <laughs> like this, I'm honestly surprised it went this well, to be fair. So this is after 12 hours. We, that's why we're going to try and fit the UVs in. I mean, it's not finished. There's still, like, all this is penetrating and randomly just thrown together. But, like, from a general glance, this is pretty good. We we got something pretty decent after twelve hours. But yeah, there's a lot of penetrations and stuff like that. That's we'll come in and refine that stuff in a bit. But yeah, we've got a uh, yeah about ten more minutes and then we'll uh, we'll wrap up the stream. Can it can it fly? Um, I kind of what is penetration? <laughs> Just when two objects smash into each other. I I didn't expect such a reasonable response from you, Chernobyl. <laughs> but yeah, the, when I built this, I originally imagined this would kind of float on the... This would kind of float off the ground a bit. This is an Autodesk stream. But your chat isn't on the stream, so you can technically say whatever you want, Chernobyl. <laughs> And you're the only mod. <laughs> as far as things like landing gear goes, <coughs> this is something that might have to have landing gear designed. And it will probably just... If, like, for example, the concept artist didn't design landing gear, it might come to us just to make something up. Maybe we can design some landing gear. In that case, I'd probably get by something. I don't know what we have. It's pretty, pretty decent height. I should encourage. Would you have intersecting meshes? Yeah, for sure. There's nothing. There's nothing wrong with intersecting meshes as long as they look, as long as they look okay. Like there's nothing wrong with like. This crashing into this, if it looks okay. Corvée wants the mod position. I'm just going to see what this looks like. That's a, that's a pretty decent drop. Yeah, we'll just we'll just pretend the client hasn't decided we need landing gear. That actually does happen a decent amount. If you never see something landed, you might never need to have landing gear. Like this is also something I mean, like if if it's not part of the bid and it's not needed, I mean not bid, if it's not part of the brief, then we might not necessarily need landing gear for this thing. Why would we delete these? That's kind of cool, actually. 
But that straight line that straight line isn't cool. This looks like a cannon from the side. Can't use landing gear from other projects. Um you can. I mean I don't have anything I don't have anything sub D ready aside from this. So if I was to kit bash some landing gear, I would probably take it from elements here, but nothing really looks landing gear y. I mean, I could make something up with this sort of stuff. But, that's the thing, right? If if you never see something land, you technically don't really need the landing gear. So you can kind of end up wasting a lot of time making something that's not needed. So, like, I wouldn't really go ahead and design landing gear until you ask your supervisor, do we actually need the landing gear? I don't know. Imagine some like massive thing just pops out the bottom. But yeah, we're kind of mucking around at this stage. I had no intention of making a landing gear. And the problem is that can potentially open another can of worms. Like if the client has never, if the, like if it's not part of the bid, 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 not part of the brief to make landing gear, and then the client sees your landing gear and they don't like it, that just opens another can of worms. To um. To take this back to concept. But yeah, just it depends entirely on the show. Just don't go too crazy with designing and making up new stuff on your own. God, this looks terrible. Whatever, this will do for now though. To check with the soups leads uh safe before doing anything creative. Yeah, for sure. Like always like always communicate with your supervisors. Like don't just go rogue and do random stuff. Yeah, this looks pretty terrible. We're just not gonna have landing gear. It's not part of my original idea. There's a lot of th this thing can just levitate, but it's fine. This is movie magic. Nothing everything doesn't have to make sense. It's a hovercraft, of course. That's like, I'm not even kidding, like, it's just movie magic. Like, not everything has to be explained. And it has, to, not everything has to be real. Yo, 3D Mentor, thanks for the, uh, the raid. We were actually about to wrap up in five minutes as well. How, uh, how was your stream? Welcome, everyone. So, for people that haven't been here before, I'm a uh, hard surface model in the film industry, and we're doing a sponsored series of streams by Autodesk of creating a production-ready asset for film. And this is what we've done so far in the first 12 hours, which is kind of shocking. <laughs> yeah, five more minutes, and then we can uh, we can wrap up. If anyone has any, like, last-minute questions. Damn, this is actually looking kind of cool. I mean, like, we can still take this much further, but further, right? Like, we can still add, like, little insets, and we can add, like, little details on top and stuff like that. Like, we will probably do that, but that's, like, the very last stage. Like, after we'll, we'll UV everything first, and then we might add, like, little insets or little bits on top. You have to go to bed. Have a have a good rest, man. Thanks to uh, thanks for the uh, raid. I appreciate it. What will we be working on next stream? I guess just more of the same stuff. I guess maybe we can go pretty heavy into UVs. 
At least for the panels. I think the panels are kind of done for now. We can probably take the panels and UV all them. Get some of that stuff out of the way. As far as like the kit bashing goes, you can kind of just keep going forever. So that, like the, the kit bashing details are like the final level. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate it. They will have a couple of antennas. That's pretty cool. Yeah, we can look into that sort of stuff. Yeah, we'll go for uh, five more minutes if anyone has any uh, last minute questions. Yo, deals ravens? Thanks for the follow. I don't know why I took these off. In the later part of the series? What do you mean? This was done from scratch? It was done using... So we have a... We had a concept model, which I did a few years ago. Very is is a bad model. We took as much of the paneling as we could off it, and we retopologized all of the paneling. Uh, you know, made them all subd ready, and then I used elements of my kit to kit bash and replace elements of this sort of stuff. So it's a it's a mix. Of, it's a hybrid of like modeling, kit bashing, and like you know subtracting elements of the kit bash mesh. Okay, bash of the concept mesh and retopologizing it. Do studios have their own kibashes? Yeah, they have their own. Well, you have to do everything from scratch. No. Nah. So yeah, what what this is this like what we're doing with this set of streams isn't technically like a modeling tutorial. It's more of an accurate simulation of what we do at work. So we always, we usually have very tight deadlines. So it's about talking about how to cut corners while, you know, being efficient but not sacrificing the quality. So yeah, this is 12 hours so far. Like stream eight or nine. What are you talking about, gentlemen? So what we're doing at the what we're doing at the moment is we've done like the first base level, and we've gotten it to a pretty like decent start. So we could start getting supervisors involved and getting feedback on this sort of stuff. And then what we'll probably do yes yesterday next stream is probably UVs. So we'll do like a base UV pass of all the main stuff like the paneling, the greebles. I probably won't really care about for the moment, but at least get the paneling out of the way. And we're kind of going to do it in layers. So, like, this is what I'm talking about. At any point, time could just run out and we need to move off the asset. So you want to be in a position where you can wrap up in, like, a day and give the asset off. You, if you don't want to spend, like, forever just manually rebuilding all of this and then the rest of the ship doesn't even exist. And then, you know, layout wants something and you just can't give them anything. So we kind of do it in layers. We do layers of refinement. You're going to write Autodesk a letter to keep them doing this. I mean, we have 10 streams. Like, that's this is only stream... I don't even know what stream... This is stream 4. So we still have 6 more streams to refine this as much as possible. So we're kind of at a level where it's it's pretty nice. Anything we do now is just refinement. What happens if that happens with the redirect resources to finish the asset? No, if if we if we if we finish if we finish the asset and if like say for example the client approves it, it's approved. We just don't touch it. 
that's what I'm saying. Like, say for example, say for example, they the client saw this, they like it, they approve it. I would just have to wrap it up. I couldn't spend like another month adding little details that no one will see because it's been approved. That's what I sort of mean. Like you kind of have to do it in waves of refinement to the point that you can kind of hop off it when needed. Or say, for example, uh, another thing that happens a decent amount is maybe the texture artist is freed up before you finish modeling. If, say, for example, I had already UV'd all the paneling, I can give the texture artist the paneling and they can already start looking at you know, testing the UVs and working out materials and stuff like that. So it's always good just to be in a position to kind of pass stuff off on down the pipeline. But yeah, we've been going for three hours. So uh, let's find someone to raid. Let's see who's on at the moment. And on. Yeah, we can uh, we can go check out Dmax. Actually, let's check out um so much monsters. We haven't raided them for a while. So much monsters. Oh, you go into shit if that happens, Chernobyl. The client isn't happy. Ah, <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, let's just go to... Let's just head to So Much Monsters. He's doing some stuff in Unreal, so that's kind of cool. But uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in, everyone. We'll... Uh... Yeah, we'll continue this on Saturday at 12 12 p.m pacific time well uh yeah thanks for tuning in, everyone i greatly appreciate it i'll uh i'll catch you all later